Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. We are Tom and Melissa, and we're thrilled that you have stopped by to watch our video and to help us make lemon crinkle cookies. In order to make these delicious cookies, you're going to need one and a half cups of sugar, you're going to need a couple of lemons. Now, the, you don't really have to have these. You can just use lemon juice. But if you've got lemons, a couple of lemons really kind of adds to the flavor of these cookies. So a couple of lemons, you're going to zest them. And then after you zest them, you're going to juice them. So you need a couple of lemons. You're going to need two sticks of butter Please don't use margarine, use real butter. It's just so much better. That's one cup of butter. You're going to need two large eggs. These are really nice farm fresh eggs that we got from a friend of ours who had some extra eggs and she gifted them to us. So we really do appreciate that. You're also going to need to have a fourth of a cup of lemon juice. Now. This can either be fresh squeezed lemon juice or you can use bottled. I've already done one lemon. We're going to do another lemon to finish this out. But um, if you don't have lemons, just use bottled lemon juice. It'll be fine. Then you're going to need lemon extract. Now I put two tablespoons of lemon extract in my lemon crinkle cookies. I know that's a lot. But if I'm going to make lemon cookies, I want them to taste like lemon. If you think that's going to be too strong for you, feel free to cut it back. Just use a tablespoon or whatever you want to use, but we use two tablespoons. You're also going to need one teaspoon of cream of tartar, one teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder. You want to use baking soda and half a teaspoon of salt. Then you're going to need four to five cups of all-purpose flour. And the reason I say four to five cups, different brands of flour behave differently in recipes. I have used flour to make a recipe where I needed four cups and I use a different brand the next time, and it might take four and a half or five cups. It just depends on the brand of flour. Normally, I use Martha White. That's just my preferred flour. I know everybody has their own favorite, but it's going to take four to five cups to make the dough stiff enough to scoop it out and roll it. And you're asking, well, what do you roll it in? You're going to roll it in powdered sugar. That's what makes it have that crinkled look when they're baked. So you'll need some powdered sugar. I don't measure it out. I just put some in a container that I can put them in and shake them around and make sure they're coated. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is add our lemon zest to our sugar. And we want to do that because we want that sugar to be infused with that lemon zest flavor. There's a lot of good oil in that lemon zest, and you want the oil. Man, it smells good. It really does. Yeah, you can smell that oil already. I love that fresh smell. Mm -hmm. I, I hate to say this because we're cooking, but do you know what, what this reminds me of? Your mom's pledge when she <laughs> used to clean your dust house. That's exactly right. My mom never cleaned house without dusting with lemon pledge. And that's exactly what this smells like. I guess that's a compliment to play a drilly, mm -hmm. <laughs> that it really did smell like, or I guess still does, smells like real lemon. Man, that smells good. Now, when you're zesting a lemon, you do not want to get the white part. All you want is that yellow skin right on top. Can you see the difference in that? See the yellow, and then after I take it off, there's white. If you get that white part, in your cookies, it's going to be really bitter. Not sour like the lemon juice, it's going to be bitter. And you do not want bitter cookies. So just barely take the yellow off the top. 
And you can see with my zester, I've got it so that it's catching it on top. You want to do it, you don't want to turn it over and zest it because then it would fall all over the place. So you want to catch it on top and then kind of tap it in. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get this started in the mixer because we want this to have time to combine together and let those oils that are in the lemon zest kind of infuse that sugar. So let's just go ahead and start it. Now I'm going to warn you, I'm using the scraper blade and it has this rubber piece on it, which kind of makes a, a squeaking sound in the um, mixer. So just get ready for that. Well, it's not too bad. Not as bad as we have heard it. So you can see that that lemon zest is just mixing in with the sugar. It's getting all those oils in with the sugar and infusing it. Now, the next step is going to be to juice this lemon and finish off the fourth of a cup of juice that we need. And there are tons of seeds in these lemons. So I'll have to pick those out. But let's just juice this. I don't want to spill the lemon juice I've already got. That would be bad. So let's just juice this really well. Get all that juice out of there. I believe this is my mom's antique juicer, isn't it? It is. Yeah, when she passed away and my dad decided he couldn't stay in that house anymore because it was just too big for him. We took some things out of it that I wanted to keep, and this was one of them. I'm not sure if you can even buy these glass juicers anymore. Maybe you can. I'm not sure. But I know she had this one for, oh my gosh, I don't know, 50 years or more, probably. A long time. The color is definitely unique. Yeah, it's, what is it, a greenish yellow? Yeah. I don't know. It's... Definitely different. It's not just like a clear glass. And you know, I don't remember her. <laughs> I don't remember her juicing much. But I guess she had it just in case she wanted it. I don't know. I can't get over how many seeds are in these lemons. There are a ton. And of course, lemons always have seeds in them. But... These two lemons have had an extraordinary number of seeds. I'm gonna throw these away. All right. That's going, oh, I see another seed. My goodness. That is just crazy. We don't want a seed in our cookies. We'll just pour that in. Ooh, that's a full fourth of a cup. You know what? I should have just left that all in there. Yeah, I'll just put it back in there and we'll pour it in from that. How's that? Perfect. Okay. Let me clean up my mess I made because I spilled a little lemon juice and it's always easier to clean as you go. There's no reason to leave a mess for later. Okay, let's add our butter to our sugar. And we'll let that cream. Now my butter is at room temperature. Those of you that have watched our videos very much know we don't refrigerate butter. We like room temperature butter because it always mixes in better. It always spreads better on toast. Melts better if you're putting it on something that needs melted better. Like pancakes or a baked potato. Alright. Put that in. Let it cream. Yes, it's going to hop around a little bit because it's 
I need to get that butter mixed in. I'm gonna burn it up and let it get mixed in there real good. And it won't maybe hop around quite so much. You can see how that's creaming really well. Alright. We're going to add in our eggs, and of course I will do that one at a time. I have checked these eggs with the float method and they're both good eggs if you don't know how to do that let me tell you if you're not sure if your egg is good you just get a glass of water put your egg in the water if it stays at the bottom or if it turns up on its end you're okay that egg is good if that egg floats to the top of the water you've got to get rid of that egg that egg has gone bad if it floats to the top thank you Yes, thank you, Rebecca. They are wonderful eggs. They are beautiful. Okay. Now, let's add in our lemon juice. In it goes. And there is some pulp in this. And that's fine. Melissa is not a big fan of pulp, but in something like this, you're okay with it, right? I don't like pulp. Yeah, That's she does. Not a good feeling. She does not like pulp in orange juice at all. Okay, let's put in our lemon extract. Get the butter off my fingers. And I know this is a lot of extract, folks, but. I want my lemon cookies to taste like lemon. So I'm putting it in. Alright. There's that. Next, we're going to add our baking soda, salt, and cream of tartar and I'm just going to dump that all in make sure we get it all in there and then I'm going to start adding our flour and I will do it a little bit at a time because we do not want a cloud of flour all over the kitchen oh and get up with the one what yeah I was gonna say unfortunately I have a tendency to have a cloud all over the kitchen. I wish there was one speed slower on this mixer because it would make it so much easier to get flour in. And see, I've already got some here on the counter. Oh, that's irritating. All right, we'll just keep adding until it looks like our dough is stiff enough that we can scoop it out and form it into balls. How many balls will this make? Cookie balls. Well, that's a really good question because I guess we need to decide how much of it you're going to eat before I form it into balls. Well, I'm going to eat probably a <laughs> ball's worth. So you can just... Just one? Have, well, at least one. Because so. the last time I made these, you ate like... And by your own admission... I ate at least two the last time, yes. Yeah. But I like cookie dough. Yeah, I know. You I also like brownie batter. Yeah, I know. And you know not what? Not so much like cake batter. That's not thick enough. You. So I want to lick the bowl. But cookie batter and brownie batter. Mmm. I almost like that as well as I like the cookies. You can eat all the cookie dough you want. So back to my question. How many? It should make about two dozen cookies. Depending, of course, on the size of the cookies you make. If you like really small cookies, it'll make more. If you make jumbo cookies, it will make less. I use a cookie scoop that is four, a four tablespoon cookie scoop. And you know what, we're getting close here. Okay, it's getting thick. I'm going to scrape it, even though we have the scraper blade on there. I am gonna scrape it and then mix it some more. It's not, I don't know. It's getting close. 
see how sticky it is. Oh, it's not too sticky. Yeah, we're close. But I want to get this off there to make sure that everything around the edge, and that scraper blade does an excellent job of scraping the sides. But especially, on this side over here. do I? Oh, yeah. But sometimes around the top, especially, you'll have some flour or some cookie dough that has snuck up there and it's not getting mixed in. So you just want to make sure that it gets in there. Let's here, put my shield back on just so I don't have a flower cloud or maybe reduce the flower cloud. Let's put just a little bit more. We're really close. Let's say one more spoon at least. And then we'll check it. That's pretty close. Do you want to taste it just to see if it's okay? Well, I mean, if I must, I, you know, I will take one for the team. There you go. Mmm. Mmm. Jimmy. Enough lemon? Oh, absolutely. But it's not uh, overwhelming. Okay. But yeah, it's definitely got the lemon taste. I think we need just a hair more flour. Sorry. But. I don't like it to be sticky. I'm going to do one more spoon. Okay. I think that's enough. Okay. I am going to mix it one more time just to mix it in good. Okay. That's it. Good deal. And I used, I had five cups in there. That's probably half a cup left. So I probably used about four, between four and four and a half. Okay. Now let me tell you, these cookies can be made and eaten any time of the year. But I don't know, there's just something about spring and summer that goes with lemon for me. So when I'm making cookies in the spring, I'm usually thinking lemon cookies. Of course, you know, things like chocolate chip cookies. Are you always know. in season. <laughs> <laughs> That's Melissa's opinion. Always. Why do you like lemon or chocolate chip cookies so much? Is it because of the cookie dough? Well, that, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I don't like any cookie dough, but I'm... Quite fond of chocolate chip. Yeah. Like that, chocolate. Is that your favorite? That would be my favorite cookie. Yeah. Yes. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay. I'm trying not to take too much off. I'm leaving you some on there. <laughs> it's all right. I hear it every time I make cookie dough. Yeah. She says, every time you scrape the bowl too clean and you got the beater clean. You didn't leave any for me. Funny parts to lick the bowl. Okay. Now. Here comes the fun part. Okay, that was a little bit of sarcasm on my part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already said the fun part was to lick the bowl. Yeah, because I'll just be honest and tell you, I don't really like rolling these in powdered sugar. I tend to have it everywhere, and powdered sugar is sticky. So, this is the scoop I use, and I just, I try my best to make every cookie the exact same size. The reason for that is that you want them to all bake at the same rate and be done at the same time. So if you make all your cookies exactly the same size, you don't have any trouble with, you know, a cookie, a couple of cookies getting done and end, end up being burned before the other cookies are ready to take out of the oven. Yeah, we don't like brown, too overly brown burned cookies either. Well, how do we like them? We like them under bake. Yeah, we probably under bake ours, but we like them really yeah. soft. And... We always under bake. We under bake everything, bread, cookies, everything. So I just rolled it in powdered sugar, and I'm going to put these 
on my cookie sheet that's got parchment paper on it. And I'll just line them up side by side. I probably won't have them touching because I'm going to put these in the freezer and freeze them. We feel like cookies bake best straight out of the freezer. And if you do that, they tend not to spread as much. They become thicker and they spread less. Now, if you like a cookie that is thin and crispy or crunchy, then you'll want these thawed before you bake them. You and could, probably a smaller one too. Yeah, yeah, a smaller one. Go with a smaller scoop. Um, but we like a good sized cookie, but we do not like them hard and crunchy. We like them soft and chewy. So we freeze them and we keep cookie dough in our freezer so it's always ready. It's kind of cute because even though our kids are adults, when they come home, they hug us, they say, I love you, and they walk <laughs> straight to the freezer. <laughs> Not always, but a lot. <laughs> Most of the time. It's they nice go. to have a little stash of cookie dough. They're like yeah. me, they like cookie dough. Well, let me tell you a funny story. To them. So our youngest daughter and her boyfriend, they're getting married in a few weeks, um, which we're thrilled about. But they came, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And I, honestly, I didn't even think about the cookies. And I did not have any in the freezer. We had finished up what I had and I just hadn't had time to make more cookie dough. And I think she normally goes looking for sugar cookie dough. Or um, not sugar cookie, she chocolate, chocolate chip. chip too. Yeah, she's like her mother. Mm -hmm. And she opened the freezer and she looked and I didn't see her doing it, but Melissa did. She moved a few things around and she said, Where's the cookie dough? <laughs> I got the biggest kick out of that. I thought that was so cute. You know, even when they get older and they come back home, they can still be cute. They don't have to be four years old to be cute. All right, I know you don't want to sit here and watch me scoop two dozen cookies and roll them in powdered sugar. So I'm going to finish these and we're going to put them in the freezer and let them freeze. And then we will probably tomorrow, probably won't do it this, this evening. It's already getting kind of late. Tomorrow when they're frozen, we will bake a batch and we'll bring you back to see what they're like. So I'm going to continue scooping the cookie dough and get it in the freezer and we will see you tomorrow morning. It is now the next day and our cookies have been in the freezer for about 24 hours. I wanted to show you how we put them in baggies and keep them in the freezer. You can see that with the size cookie balls that we make, we can get nine in a quart Ziploc bag. And I just write on the front what the cookie is, what temperature to bake them at, and for how long. Now I always write on here the amount of time needed from frozen, because these are frozen. They're hard. So, you know, if Melissa and I at eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night decide we need a cookie, we can take two cookies out and bake them and the rest stay frozen. Or we can bake 20 if we want to. So we really like having frozen cookie balls. So this morning, actually this afternoon, I took some cookies out of the freezer and we have baked these lemon crinkle cookies. 
I know that when we made the dough yesterday using two tablespoons of lemon extract sounded like a lot, but I can tell you we've already eaten one of these <laughs> and it is not too much lemon in it. They are a lemony, but they're not overpowering. Do you think, Melissa? No, in fact, if you really love lemon, you might want a little bit more. Yeah, we did talk about that if somebody is a real lemon lover, you could even go with a third tablespoon of lemon. But these are really good cookies. They don't spread a lot. They don't get to be huge cookies, but they really are good. All right, I get to do the fun part. Do you want a bite? Uh, sure. Okay. Even though I've already had a bite because we did split one a minute ago. Yeah, we did split one. But I'll take another bite. Oh, she took a little princess bite. <laughs> mm. I'll show you the inside of it. It's nice and soft. Mm-hmm. They're really nice, soft cookies. And honestly, I think they're just, with two tablespoons of lemon extract, they have just the right amount of lemon for you to know that it's a lemon cookie. Any less, and you'd be thinking, okay, what's that flavor? For me, I could even go with a third tablespoon of lemon extract in it. I would like it a little stronger, but I know not everybody would. So you adjust it to whatever you think. All right, let me remind you, we would appreciate it if you would go right below the video and click the thumbs up. Click the subscribe button if you've not already done that and the little notification bell beside of it. And we would appreciate it if you would share our videos. And really, we love hearing from you. So if you'd leave us a comment, we really would appreciate that. Remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Have a great day, everyone.